this film reminds me of some of the great thrillers from the 70s. There's just no holding back. It's a world that turns everything around on a dime. Defense lawyers who ask the wrong sorts of questions, they're expendable. Closed circuits, a conspiracy thriller. This is the most high profile murder case in British history. It's film that grips you with its story and with its characters. My character, Martin Rose, is a real expert in the world of advocacy. Very sure of himself, very competitive, very confident, very smart. Oh, well, at the beginning of the film, Martin is defending a man accused of terrorism. Rebecca's character, Claudia, is appointed as the special advocate on my case. Do you know of any reason which would prejudice your ability to carry out this case? No, my lord. No, my lord, I know of no reason. We're simply trying to defend our client. Your client is a guilty man. The authorities are certain that they have their man, and Martin begins to find that all is not very straightforward. There are powers at play that neither you nor I may even hope to control. He pulls one thread, and then that leads to another, and gets drawn into a whole web that unfolds as the piece goes on. With the opening, with the bomb, I wanted to shoot it with 12 screens simultaneously and start the film from the point of view of who's behind the camera observing what's going on in the streets. And that idea threaded itself through the film wherever we shot. We would often cover the scene from the point of view of a CCTV camera. And we wound up leaning on that material a lot more because the idea of who's behind the camera became more interesting as we cut the film. There are over half a million closed circuit cameras in London. And I'm sure there are at least half a dozen watching me right now. The references to CCTV and how much Martin's being watched and how much information is being controlled was so important to the character because it does mess with Martin's head through the progression of the story. We're being managed. We set about trying to create a world which was recognizably real, but which also had a slightly paranoid edge when you need that to creep into the film. And I wanted it to feel recognizably like London. London is as big a player in this film as anything else. It has so many different faces, everything from the wigs and gowns of courtrooms and the corridors of power to the underbelly and the back alleys and the river. It represents all the different faces of London. It's very much about the city and about how exciting and vibrant it can be and also how claustrophobic and inducive towards states of paranoia and surveillance and all these things that we looked at. But you do get a sense of what What's at stake? And I think once you realize that, then the game is on. MI5 do not kill people on the mainland. And what the hell have you got yourself into? Dump your bag, dump everything. Get out of there, now. Prior to the bombing, there was no contact between MI5 and the defendant. This is one of those rare films where the situation that the two main characters are in is slowly revealed and the level of danger is amplified. I think it's a really grown-up drama. It gets in your head and kind of gets you thinking. Hopefully it's the kind of film that people will talk about and discuss the issues in the film and discuss the characters. An audience can expect a very smart, thrilling and exciting story. Emotionally engaging, but at the same time will force one to think about concerns for the time that we live in now. Martin, you be careful. It's a bit bloody late for that.